Hey, Tony here. Today I've got a special guest that's joining me and we're going to give our recommendations for some of the Criterion Collection. Um, titles that we think that you might be interested in or some that we think that you should check out. Um, we do have the Barnes & Noble 50% off sale going on. So I asked Al from the Criterion Corner to join me and we're going to give you some of our recommendations. So please stay tuned. So it's good to have Al here with me from the Criterion Corner. How's it been going? Oh, things are good. It's good to see you more yeah, than just a viewer. Too. Yeah, it's we've, been a while. Uh, yeah, we've been texting back and forth, but uh, haven't yeah. done anything like this. So, yeah, it's it's good to see you, man. I haven't seen any new content on your channel lately. What's been going on with the Criterion Corner? Well, um, you know, things happen. Uh, going a little bit of a different direction, but the Cape Cat. So we had a whole channel, you know, Cinema Machine. Mm -hmm. And um, Ryan uh, decided to go full Amish and uh -huh. just give up all of his movies. And Brandon is still heartbroken about Zack Snyder. Uh, that's why they did the Cape Cast. And um, yeah, it just felt odd being the only person over on the channel. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, yeah, going to go a different direction here soon on a different channel. So okay, but, good, good. I'll go ahead and link down below the um, the existing channel in case yeah. anybody wants to check out any of your other Criterion um, videos. Um, so what I thought we would do today is kind of go over our five recommendations. Okay. Um, now the ones that I'm going to be including in mine are some that I've never previously talked about on my other recommendation videos. So these will all be new ones and not new titles, but new recommendations. Sure. And they'll all be titles that I've already seen. So it's nothing that was anticipated. It's more of what I've been watching lately. So, um, but I thought we'd just go ahead and let you go first since you're the guest. Um, okay. What would be your first recommendation? Well, um, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I've I've had <laughs> I've forced other people to watch this movie recently and I have a little movie club that I do okay. and um, I'm kind of in charge of bringing the selection of movies for everyone to pick from and Personal Shopper by Olivier Assayas. Oh. Have you seen this? No, I haven't seen it, but you know, it's been on my wish list for a while. I've just always been hesitant to to get it because I haven't really heard much about it. You don't own this? I do not. Okay. I'm going to buy you a copy of it. That's no, my you gift. don't have to buy me one. No, no, no. I'm going to buy you a copy. I know you've got, look, look behind you. I know you've got enough, to, but this is my gift to you because look at your sweatshirt. You did something oh, for yeah. us. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, we're um, wearing sweatshirts. Let's make note that we're wearing sweatshirts yeah. <laughs> in the middle of summer. So yeah, that's dedication, right? If you knew where we were located, you right. would really. So but this movie is so good. And I don't know if you've ever watched a movie where the lead actress is so bad, but the movie still holds everything else up. Like it must be good direction and good story because, uh, was it Kristen Stewart? Is that her name? Yes. Um, uh -huh. She, she just, I don't know. It, it's like, she doesn't want to be there or something. Yeah. That's the only thing that hurts this movie. And, and, and people kind of fawn all over her, which is fine. But I'm telling you, even her bad performance does not hurt this movie. And that's the yeah. one thing that uh, people that I've kind of forced to watch this movie, you know, against like they all come away like, oh, that's pretty good. But it's it's one of those movies you really have to think about. You really have to pay attention to. So if you it, it's a really good one, it's a it's a slow burn, but it is a it is a really good movie. And this was like a, a blind buy for me at one point. Uh, OK, a few shops. Few yeah, sales, so few sales I know going. that with. Kristen Stewart, she she always feels kind of bland in a lot of the performances that mm. she gives. So I guess it's no different with that one, huh? Yeah, she's it's almost like it's there's glimpses of hope every once in a while with her. And then it's very fleeting though. <laughs> yeah. So so she 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 comes and goes. But yes, yeah, it's, it's just like she doesn't want to be there or something. And she's given all these really big, like I won't say complicated, but very, you know, kind of well thought of roles. And I just don't know if she respects them as much as she should or, yeah. or what the case is, but holding your nose and shaking your head is not acting. Yeah. You know, so, but, but the movie is really, really good. I can't suggest it highly. Okay. Enough. So what spine number is that? And what year was it? Um, what year was the film actually released? Uh, spine number is eight ninety nine. 
and the movie was released in 2016. So it's relatively new. Okay. Um, I think it came on Criterion 19-ish, 18-ish, but uh, yeah, I highly okay. suggest it. Okay, so my first recommendation is Broadcast News. Have you ever seen this? Nice. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that that's is a really, really good one. one. Um, this one is by number 552. <laughs> from 1987 and i do okay. remember seeing this one in the theater when it came out um i was a very big fan of all of the stars that were in this one um albert brooks holly hunter william hurt great mm -hmm. performances it's a really good way of watching someone um i guess if you see like the behind the scenes of a newscast and what they go through daily to get the news mm -hmm. and how someone who is fairly new to the game kind of rises and becomes like a, a news anchor star, you know, um, but very enjoyable. But anyways, I definitely recommend you check this one out. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. Do you have any memories of this one? Yeah. And actually, I used to work in the news, oh, um, both local and, you know, national broadcast like CNN and stuff. And it it uh it's pretty cutthroat and that movie uh, now i saw that movie as a much younger person and then worked in the industry and didn't think about it. and then i revisited that movie and it made more sense it 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 almost became like office space after you watch office space you don't want to go back ever go back to work right that's kind of how that movie was but yeah it, it's uh it's pretty darn good that's a, oh. that's a classic man yeah it really is i, I love it so what would be your next re next recommendation all right, so I'm trying not to be too heavy in my picks, but it's really hard when you pick out the Criterion Collection because uh, there's not a whole lot of comedy. But have you ever seen Hunger, Steve McQueen movie? Oh, I have seen that one. Oh, man, this movie, 2008 uh, release. It's only 96 minutes, mm -hmm. but you feel every single second of this yeah. movie. And, it, and, and for good reason. That's the thing, for good reason. And this is one of those movies that... I truly believe that they should teach this movie. If they don't, they should teach this movie in film school uh, across the board from production, you know, direction, acting, everything. This is just one of the absolute best and it is spine five zero four. I don't want to go too much into the, um, it is based on a true story. Uh, the plot is there's a prisoner and uh, I believe it's, I believe it's Ireland, if, if I'm not mistaken. I could be yeah. wrong, but um, prison things aren't going well. So he does a hunger strike, and you watch him go through that. And I really don't want to say too much because I think it's better, yeah, just for people to it. get in there and watch it. But just, just know that you're gonna feel a way after you watch. You're gonna need a fun activity after you watch this. Yeah, movie. definitely. It's a very dark one. Yeah. Um, not a not a feel good movie. <laughs> no, no, yeah. but it is it it's it's one that sticks with you and you never forget the movie. Yeah. Okay, well, my next pick is definitely going to be another Holly Hunter movie because I don't know, she's really great, and I couldn't think of anything better than oh. the piano. This is a 4K release. Um, this one came out um in 1993, and it is spine number 1110 and this is another one that i saw in the theater mm. um excellent performance this right here is probably one of my favorites that i watched last year mm. or you know whenever this one came out i think it would of course it was last year 2022 but really good performance with her so it also has harvey Keitel, and it has a young anna paquin in it but this is um done by jane campion and also with that there's some excellent special features included with this, which I love about the Criterion Collection. Mm -hmm. um, some really good scenes in this one with someone who is, um, I don't know, it's, she's really attached to that piano. And <laughs> yeah. it's, um, it's got some really painful scenes in it, but yeah. very, very much worth the watch. Is, is that the one Anna Paquin, didn't she win? Or it was her Oscar winning debut. Yeah, yeah, film. she was, she was really good, um, and she's she's still uh, every blue moon that I see her in something, she's still very good. Yeah, so. yeah. She and Holly Hunter is good too, so that's a good. I mean, you know, you're watching Holly Hunter when you watch her, but she still disappears, yeah. so she's good. 
Yeah, and Anna Paquin really hasn't done anything recently that I've been aware of. Yeah, wasn't she in one of the vampires? Yeah, True show? Blood. Yeah, True yeah. Blood. But after that, I haven't really seen her in anything else. But I'm sure she has been. Yeah, it's it's weird how those people just kind of disappear in in I guess in public eye, but yeah. they're really out there doing like a thousand things. Oh, if I'm you sure. Really, yeah, it's, it's crazy. They're not in their basement doing YouTube videos, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our acting career is about to take off. Right. So. <laughs> so what would be your next recommendation? I'm going to throw a triple feature on you, but I won't go too long okay. if you're okay with that. Because I yeah, just I'm think these movies go so well together. I've got Scanners, Repo Man, mm -hmm. and Videodrome. And oh, I yeah. think – I think these movies are classic enough to speak for themselves. And I think they also have some of the best packaging right. in the collection. Uh, Repo Man um, is by far some of my favorite packaging on any kind of media that yeah, I've ever had. Yeah, the colors and the design. Yeah, and just the soft cover and everything. But all three movies, if if you have a group of folks over, they're they're. It's fantastic. So you've got for Videodrome, you got spine number two, four, eight. For Repo Man, you got six, five, four. And for Scanners, you have seven, one, two. And I mean, you're not looking at that long. You got 89 minutes, 92 minutes, and 103 minutes. And they were all released right in the, around the same time. Mm -hmm. So Scanners was uh, 81. Um, Repo Man 84 and Videodrome 83 and these movies in my opinion have you seen these oh these yeah three? I have I think these movies hold up and they're still as disturbing as they were Videodrome especially is still disturbing as it was back then so yeah but I, I think those movies are just some of my favorites so yeah, they feel like kind of like a grungy type um, sci-fi type films yeah actually Repo Man Repo Man's one that's really dark and yeah gritty yeah so that it's it's a triple feature but i'm choosing that as one pick i know this is yeah. your show but i, I broke the no, rules. It's good. <laughs> i'm not picky right <laughs> well my next pick is one that i just watched uh, another one that i watched last year for the first time mm -hmm. and it is gray gardens i haven't um, seen that have you not ever seen this one so this no. is a documentary um this one is by number 123 and it is from 1976. It's 94 minutes. It's like you're getting a peek into their life. Okay. Um, they are cousins to um, John F. Kennedy's wife. Jackie O. Yep. And they are destitute and living in this old house. Ooh. And they can barely take care of themselves. But they live like they're just high socialites. Mm. You know, they um, they still live the lifestyle. As you can tell, she has a fur coat on. Oh, and yeah. it's just like a, um, it's almost like a reality show in a way. Um, you're kind of getting a peek into their life. This documentary was filmed over several months. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a movie that they did. Um, Drew Barrymore and um, Jessica Lange played these two roles. Oh, really? And just a really good story. Just a funny, <clears throat> um, dark, um, just kind of weird to see these people live in the way that they lived. They're yeah, I want to. Very interesting. I want to see that one now. <laughs> is, is that one still available? It's not one that's been. No, I think, I believe it's still available. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. always sad when one goes away and you're like, ah, oh, I waited too long to get it. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I might have to pick that one up if yeah, I can so find it. It's Great Gardens. And you actually get two documentaries in it. You oh. have the Great Gardens documentary. And then you have the bills of Grey Gardens, which is a follow-up to it. Um, so it's really interesting. Wow. Have you ever seen the documentary? It's not on the Criterion, but The Queen of Versailles? I have not. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a lifestyle. This, These very affluent people are building this house, and it's a very gaudy house. I think it's in Kentucky or somewhere like that. Anyway, um, yeah, they just run out of money, or they just the project just falls apart, and – it's such a good documentary. It's so weird. So yeah, it's, I like it's kind of stuff. Sounds like it'd be a co good companion with that one. But yeah, I want to see that one now. So uh, yeah. hopefully, I can find it because I had a hard time finding. But you know, yeah, yeah. This is be really a good segue to talk about your trip yeah. to Bar so my trip to Barnes and Noble. 
I was very shocked about how much they had cut down. The, yeah, I saw you say that because of the records, right? Yeah, all the vinyl. They where all the um, Criterion used to be mm-hmm. is covered up with, with vinyl records now, and they just had the back wall, just a little section for the Criterion collection. Now, what did you find at your store? Well, I'll send you a picture of it. Uh, okay, and I'll so post that. And um, but yeah, it's just literally one sliver and when i say sliver i don't mean like there's a row or it's just one little corner of the whole entire movie section which is depleted but it wasn't because of vinyl it was just because uh i was like well this can't be it you know they had maybe six titles with like multiple maybe they had like eight titles with multiple copies of each title Mm. and they didn't have any like you know above the uh main stock or anything than having like you know hey buy this kind of impulse buy area or anything so i went and asked and i said hey uh do you have criterion anywhere else because i thought they maybe have them on an end cap somewhere else in the store maybe yeah, they're the doing signage because they had signage up for the 50 percent off sale they didn't even have that here at yeah. this one they didn't have anything promoting it and um the young lady that i asked she said we're having a hard time even getting them in like we can't even get Criterion, and I don't know if it's just this particular store, because I've watched like your video that you made, you know, a little bit that you showed in the store, like, mm-hmm. and others that I've watched. Um, you know, seems like they had a lot more than I saw. So I'm gonna go out tomorrow to a a bigger area, um, bigger Barnes and Noble, and see if I can find some. But yeah, it was it was very str- it was. It was heartbreaking, actually, because I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go hang out with Tony tonight. I right. need to, I need to bring on a new one. I haven't even gone out this cell yet." And um, yeah, it was just, it was very strange, and it, I just kind of walked away with my tail tucked between my legs and yeah. just felt sad about it. So yeah, yeah. So yes. I guess it's your turn t- um, for the next. Oh yeah. Pick. Yeah. So, are you a black and white? movie person like do you yes. love black and white movies i do so if anybody's ever heard me talk about criterion they've heard me talk about i'm gonna do a double feature now sorry <laughs> but in a lonely place is mm. when have you seen this i have not oh my goodness gracious 810 810 is the spine uh released in 1950 it's only 93 minutes now, this movie has a lot of history behind it. Um, you have, of course, you have uh, Mr. Humphrey Bogart there. Nicholas Ray, the director, okay, was married to the lead actress, which I always forget her name, uh, Gloria Graham. Mm. Okay. Now, Gloria Graham jumps off the screen in this movie. She just, she is a movie star from this, you know, she just leaps. So there's a backstory to where, she he had a son from a prior marriage in real life the the director nicholas ray i think he was 15 years old she ran off with the son in real life wow scandal yeah and they made a movie about that with annette benning um, annette benning playing gloria graham i believe it was hmm. um i can't remember the name of that movie but i'm telling you this movie right here after you learn all this stuff, but this movie by itself is just a great movie and a good companion with that is leave her to heaven. Oh yeah. This this movie, this, the, not only is that just like one of the best covers ever, (laughs) but it's just, this movie's great. The story is fantastic. Um, so we've got, uh, 1945, it's 110 minutes long and it is spine number i'm in the dark here so hang on (laughs) i'll find it for you it's uh 1020 so yeah it's it's pretty fantastic um but both these movies i think this is a good double feature but if you're only going to watch one if you're only going to pick up one in a lonely place is maybe my favorite criterion movie altogether okay i'm definitely gonna pick that one up so that is yeah and i want to hear your full review of it because I forced uh, other people to watch that and they weren't into black and white movies. Yeah. But 
Um, they still dug the movie overall, but I want to hear your review of it because, uh, yeah, it's it's just one that I like to talk about. Okay, yeah. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is Moonrise Kingdom. Ooh, yeah, you just picked this one up, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And the thing about it, have you, do you have this one in your collection? I have all the Wes Anderson movies, okay. yes. Yeah, so this is the Wes Anderson film that I had not seen before. Mm-hmm. But I actually watched this um, two weeks ago, I believe, mm-hmm. um, before I got the Criterion. I just had the regular release mm-hmm. and really enjoyed it. Um, it's a coming-of-age film. It's got a lot of different aspects to it. Um, just I really enjoy, of course, the quirkiness of Wes Anderson is always fun. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed this one. This, to me, was probably my, probably my favorite of the Wes Anderson films. Okay. Um, but... Just a really good one. It comes in the nice little digi pack packaging, and it is spine number seven seventy six, and it's from two thousand twelve, and it's only ninety four minutes long. Um, but just some really great performances. Um, of course, it's got Bill Murray in it for yeah. a bit piece. <laughs> um, but even the even the child actors were really good. It's got yeah. a pretty large cast as far as everybody that's involved in this. So yeah. I'm sure it's probably a pretty um, hard directed film with all the things that were going on. But of course, any of the Wes Anderson films, the way that they're stylized and everything seems kind of difficult, but just really enjoyable. You you don't even feel the, the runtime of this one. Yeah. I, I have such a good time when I watch Wes Anderson movies in general. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, the funniest things I've ever seen in my life is uh, way back when, uh, Life Aquatic came out in theaters. Mm-hmm. I took a girl on a date to see that movie and it didn't go much further after that date. I loved it. She hated it. And it was just a, yeah. like a red flag for both of us that <laughs> yeah. tell people true. But um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy his movies. Uh, I want to see Asteroid City. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I was wondering if you had seen it yet. I haven't. Um, I, I was going to go the other day and then had something come up and it's just one of those things. It's supposed to be streaming soon, but I really want to go to theaters and support yeah. him. I, I haven't really heard much about it, so I'm not sure how much longer it's actually going to stay in the theater. Yeah. Around around me, they don't really keep films in the theater very long. So if you don't usually see it within the first four weeks, you know, the first month, yeah, then they're usually out. That's too bad because. Yeah. But I'm but, sure it'll get a. I'm sure it'll get a really nice release. Do you own any of these other movies on Criterion? I do. I think I think I want to say that I own all of them that okay. that they have out. Yeah, I really I would want love them. to see a box set. I I would like to see that. I want to see them put French Dispatch on Criterion. Uh, yeah. I love that movie so much. It's so. Fun. Have you seen that one? Mm-hmm, I have. That movie's yeah. fantastic. I've so. seen. I want to say I've seen all of them. I think Moonrise Kingdom was the only one that I had not seen. Yeah. How do you feel about his really, stop motion stuff? Yeah. Um, um, the fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. And uh, Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. Yep. I've got that. Yeah. Um, really like those. I, I love stop motion animation. Yeah. He he just found a way to do it, like make it new again. Yeah. I don't know. He's so. And then the special features so on those releases are amazing. I love watching how they do all that. Yeah. It, it, that's the thing about his releases in general is it's all. It, I don't know if you're. I'm sure you've got this, but Robert Rodriguez used to release whenever he did a Blu-ray or whatever. He had um, film cooking school or whatever he called it. It was like his version of film school, how he did everything oh. in his garage and everything. Yeah. And um, like there's on Spy Kids, on uh, Desperado, all those movies. So if you if you don't – if you've never seen his kind of school on there, you should, you should go check them out. But that's kind of how I feel about Wes Anderson. Yeah. I feel like – there's like a unintentional uh, film school on yeah. his, uh, movies. Yeah, it's amazing. And the commentaries it, are funny too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, that's one thing I don't hardly ever do is listen to the commentary. Yeah, there's one, Jason Schwartzman, uh, he takes a phone call or something in the middle of it. I can't remember because mm. it's been so long, but yeah, they're all really funny. So, so what would uh, be your next recommendation? I'm not going to throw another multi uh, tiered one on you. Yeah. Um, but I will say that I am not a fan of this actor, but this movie is before, you know, he became big star. Uh, and that's John Travolta. 
Oh yes. And blow out yeah. this and Nancy Allen too. I mean, for yeah. crying out loud. Um, but this is a 1981 movie. It's only 180, uh, eight, 108 minutes. I'm sorry. 562 is the spine five, six, two. And this is a De Palma film. Mm-hmm. And this might be my favorite De Palma film. It's great. This movie, uh, it's so creative because you have to solve a crime. He's a Foley artist. He, or he's getting Foley noises for uh, something he's doing. And he's out one night and he maybe or maybe not witnesses a crime. And they have to use his sound to try to solve the crime. Sound. That's so creative to me. And um, it really does keep you on the edge of your seat. And uh, I bought this. On Criterion and Arrow had it out at mm-hmm. one point, and I will say the Criterion is my preferred. Not to say Arrow did a bad job because I do have some preferred for Arrow, but um, this is a very good one, and I highly suggest that you watch this with uh, a few people so you guys can kind of talk about it after because you're going to want to talk to somebody about this movie right. after you watch it. So yeah, blow out. So is that the? So I think they released that in 4K. Also, this is just the Blu-ray. Yeah, that's what um, I have. Yeah, I, I'm. I have a hard time with getting everything on 4k because mm-hmm. I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like some older movies actually look worse in 4k because you can like 89 Batman. I mm-hmm. know that you just got those special edition, um, still books and whatnot. But when I went and saw that in the theater again, they had it like super duper, you know, resolution. You can see the cells around the bat. Oh, yeah. wing and everything. So I just, I, and I know that they've done a really good job and I know Criterion is going to do a good job, but um, yeah, it, some I'll get in 4k. Some, I think I'll just pass on, but this one yeah. I'll probably get in 4k eventually just for the simple fact. I love the movie right. so much. Yeah. My, my thoughts on the Criterion 4k releases, if it's a new title that they're putting out on 4k, it mm-hmm. hasn't been released before through the Criterion collection, then I'm definitely going to buy the 4k, but if yeah. it's a title that I've already got in the collection, then I, I'm I'm happy with just having what I already have. Yeah, uh, I, especially with, I mean, how many multiples of things that you have? Because you have not yeah. only Criterion, you probably have, you oh, know, ha, uh, you can watch it in different ways all the time. So right, right, works out for you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm with you on that though. I'm right there with you. Okay, my next recommendation is. Inside Lewin Davis. Oh, Have you seen this? Is that one of your picks? It's not one of my picks. I had it over here as an alternate. But yes, yes this man. movie is so good. I love this film. I, I was, I went into this blindly. I did, you know, mm-hmm. typically I don't do too much research other than watching the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and if the trailer interests me, then that's where I kind of go start digging a little bit more before I purchase it. But this is spine number 794 from 2013. And it stars... Um, Oscar Isaac, mm-hmm. and also this is a Joel and Ethan Cohen film, which I love their films, and I just love this film. It's so down to earth and just I don't know, it's just an easy watch. What What did you think about it? I, I think it's, I think it's one of the best movies about musicians that I've ever yeah. seen. And if you are a musician you need to watch this movie because it shows you the heartbreak you the struggle and, and it's just, and, and man, this made me a true believer in Oscar Isaac. Like I liked yeah. him just fine. I was like, Oh, this guy's good. But that made me remember his name. Yes. It, it, you know? So, uh, and the scene with he, Adam driver and Justin Timberlake in the studio, I won't, I won't spoil it. But that is one of the funniest things. And actually, uh, Brandon, myself, and when Ryan was an Amish, we used to quote that all the time together. So, uh, yeah, it and it has a really good soundtrack to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I got burned out when the Oh Brother Where Art Thou, right. where Art Thou mm-hmm. came out because people just, you know, put that in the, in the yeah. ditch and buried it. But I feel like this one is a little more approachable and, um, you know, it's – it's it's not as in your face, but uh, I really I really did dig this. This yeah. movie's great. Now, um, so I know that we've gone over our five recommendations each. Mm-hmm. Some a little bit more, right? <laughs> yeah. But I do have some quick. Um, I guess I have some quick 
um, honorable mentions. If we want to just kind of show those. Yeah. Um, it happened one night. I would definitely recommend people check this out. If you like black and white, it happened one night. It's a good one mm -hmm. to check out. And if you like ghost stories, we have the un uninvited. I haven't There's seen another that one. old one. This right here is from 1944 and it is a ghost story. Very well done. The sound is amazing. A recent pickup that I did um, was Triangle of Sadness. I don't know. Have you seen this one yet? That's on my list to get this go around. Yep. It's a good one. It's, it's one of the newer releases. And then lastly, I've recently watched Funny Games, which is a home invasion movie with English subtitles, which was kind of, I'll do subtitles, but um, when I'm really wanting to watch what's happening, it's really distracting having to, <laughs> to read, yeah. you know, but those are, I would definitely recommend people check those out. What about you? Well, you know, a couple sales ago, everybody in the Criterion YouTube sphere, um, Nathan Hell, uh, James from Twentieth Twenty First Movie, mm -hmm. all all the all the big hitters, including yourself, like worst person in the world. Yes, this you movie, think about that? dude. You talk about a movie that just rips your heart out. If you've ever, if you've ever been in a relationship. Like this is probably the best like relationship movie, one of if not the like relationship movie I've ever seen because it it's really honest mm -hmm. and they don't pull punches. Um, she really is one of the worst people <laughs> in the world. Um, but I really thought that uh, the 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 lead actor, um, oh shoot, uh, Dan. Uh, I, Adair, Daniel Lee, I think his name, Danielson Lee. Um, anyway, I thought he stole the shit. Now, she was good. Renate uh, Renzva, I think is how you say it. She was know. really good. Huh? I don't even try to pronounce the name. <laughs> I'm probably butchering it. So, um, But Joachim Trier uh, directed it. And um, yeah, this, this is, don't try to watch this movie. Just buy it. Right. So I made the mistake of watching this on Hulu first. Oh, did you? A long time ago. And I watched it and then I was like, well, I've got to own it now. And um, I got it and I've watched it a couple more times. And yeah, yeah it's really good. It's Another one um, is Man Push Cart. Have you seen that? Oh, I haven't seen that yet. I, that, that is on my wish list. Dude, slow burn, but it is worth the burn. Yeah. It is so worth getting burned on that one. And <laughs> um it is it is it's it's a very simple story guy comes to america gets a little food cart has to push it around and stuff and just life happens it's you know and so it's it's really good but um and and if you don't own it one of the most trendy copies or uh, titles uh is uh dazed and confused oh yes this is the best packaging maybe mm -hmm. um as far as just fully, but this movie, uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Um, stay with my dad one summer in Texas where this is based. And, uh, it was my sister, myself and my best friend. We stayed for a whole summer and we watched this every single night of that summer. Really? Like we watched did you it. Get burned out on it. No. And we bought the soundtrack and we did everything and we were all right. All right. All right. And like, we, we actually did the dumbest thing ever. We rented it and never bought it. We just rented it. We just kept renewing yeah. the rental. So my dad was like, can we just buy it guys? But yeah, that's so it has a lot of nostalgia for you also. Then it brings yeah. you back to that summer. Yeah. So I was glad they put out like a, a good ver, And that's one mm -hmm. I will get on 4k. Cause um, they put a really good documentary on the oh, 4k version. And uh, it just tells you how much everybody hated making that movie. Yeah. Um, Apparently it was a, it was a rough movie to make, but yeah, those are, those are, those are my picks, man. Sorry. I had so many, but no, that's great. I, I, I love seeing what everybody else is recommending. That's usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll go off of people's recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest um, part of me being able to figure out what to buy. If I, if I know someone that's enjoyed it and they recommended it to me, then I, I typically buy it and I'm, I'm usually not disappointed in it. Yeah. In a lonely place. I can't recommend that one enough. Um, yeah. Um, uh, so I got to watch that one. Well, I got to get the Grey Gardens and I got to get the All box right. set. So, Have you ever subscribed to the Criterion channel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you currently subscribed to it? I'm not right now. Give me a... Um, 
the simple fact is I, I like the channel. I think it's great, but I, you know, I got into vinyl in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I came late to that party and I went head first uh, hard into that. And I'm still doing that pretty hard, but I find it more um, kind of like emotionally uh, ingrained if I watch the yeah. physical movie. Right. And um, so I, it's hard for me to stream because I have so many of these movies here. Right. Uh, and I know they put other stuff up there, but also just a little tip for everybody. Most of the Criterion collection is on HBO Max. Yeah. On the uh, Turner Classic, a a a C a M C or whatever it is they have on, that they have tied in there. So, yeah, because what, what, what made me think of that is, you know, um, Great Gardens may not be for everybody. Like I said, it's a documentary. Mm -hmm. So it may be a one time watch type. So if you can oh, find yeah. it somewhere else, you may want to check it out before you know, before you purchase it, that yeah. would, that would be my only recommendation out of all of these that I showed. Mm -hmm. If it's a documentary, not all documentaries are going to hit everybody the same. Mm -hmm. So those might be some that you'd want to check out before you purchase, because That's a lot of times the documentaries are typically a one-time watch for me, mm -hmm. but great gardens was one of those that was really different and unique. So I enjoyed that one. Did, do you have any of the criterion that are no, no longer in print? I do. I have Rosemary's Baby. Same. I have, um, goodness, I, I, I just, the, the title just escaped me. Um, Man Who Fell Days, to Earth. Days of Heaven. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Richard Gere. Um, yeah. I think those yeah. are the only two that I can think of. There may be other ones that I'm not aware of. Yeah. The, it's It's funny because Rosemary's Baby. I was like, oh, I'll get that. I'll just right. kept pushing it off as and one all of those. Of a sudden, boom, it's gone. Yeah, it's just gone. Like they don't give you any kind no. of warning. And so I happened to find a sealed copy of that on eBay mm -hmm. for less than like the sale price. Wow. And that was like after because it's gone up into like the hundred plus range. Oh, I'm sure. And somebody just didn't know how to work eBay or whatever it was. It wasn't aware of what they had. Yeah. Something yeah. and sealed fully legit copy. And I've snagged that up so quickly. Well, that's oh amazing. Yeah. How, how many criterion collection titles do you have in your collection? hundred plus. I can't remember. Yeah. It's like, it's probably in the hundred fifty ish, 200 Something, range. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I think I have just a little bit over 200. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem like it when you're looking at them on the shelf. It looks <laughs> yeah, tiny, yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're some of my favorites. And I really, you know, I do watch a movie every single day, but mm -hmm. I really don't hit the Criterion films until July or November. I usually just mm -hmm. get in that into that mood to watch them around the holidays or or when the sales going on. I like to check out what I purchase. Well, um, I, I think that's I think, what I, these recommendations are good for. I think people like us we treat these sale days as holidays oh, almost yeah, so um yeah like um even you and i text back and forth when they did the one day sale uh oh, yes. last yeah. one they did and those um, sales. yeah and those i'm not as much to leap on but um i did leap on a couple here and there and um but i'm scared that barnes and noble is going to go away and we're going to have to rely on Amazon and, right. you know, ordering and, and, and it's something about going out and doing the tangible thing. So it's, yeah, it's fun. Well, about a week before the sale started, I did read a news article about how the, some stores were going to be getting a, some Barnes and Nobles were going to get a big criterion upgrade to where they pretty much had almost every title available in the store. And really? so whenever I went to my Barnes and Noble, I was expecting to have, some big changes. Of course, there, there's only limited um, locations that were having that done. Sure. So I thought, oh, well, at least I'll still have my Barnes and Noble. But yeah, that, that's when I really got shocked and disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did did they make a? Did they list off the stores that would be? They did. I, if I if I can find the article, I'll put it up on the screen so people can can check it out. Yeah, I'll um, uh, I'll have to go seek that out because I, I, I love watching the Criterion Closet 
episodes. Oh my do. gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Man. It's yeah. Like, oh man. I want to be in that. I want to be in that closet. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty amazing. That is, that is a dream. Like, could you, and sometimes I don't know if it's just the, the way my mom raised me or whatever, but um, I see people loading those bags up to the brim and right. I'm like, Oh, come on guys. Don't be greedy. Right. But I would be way more. I'd be oh, like, Can I, I get a second bag? Yeah. I'd be putting it in my arms. <laughs> I'd be going over. I'd be going off of those um high going after those high dollar items. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd I'd get the I'd get the Ingmar set for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got the set, but I haven't oh, broken it open. I haven't broken it open yet. Man, I've yeah. almost pulled the trigger on that a couple times. Uh, yeah. one question for you: Do you have any that are coming up in the future releases or maybe even releasing this month that you're going after? There's a few new releases this month that I've already got in my shopping cart. I'm not going to order them yet until they're released. Cause I may want to go out. I, I like going out to the store yeah. um, just to, to see what I can find, but yeah, there's some titles. How about you? What, what about you? Yeah. I'm getting triangle of sadness. I know it's not coming out, but right. um, that's one I'm definitely going to get. And then, um, in September, they got the trial Franz Kafka story oh, yeah. coming out. I love Franz Kafka uh, and La Bamba. Oh, definitely La Bamba. That movie was a staple in my house when I was a kid. Uh, right. And uh, that cover that they did looks great. Uh, but After Hours as well, the Scorsese that's coming out. I believe it's all September, October, something like that. Oh, yeah. Releases. Um but yeah, there's, there's a, I'm going to go out this month probably twice and probably get a few copies of something here if I can find them. Oh, right. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm interested in the Pasolini 101 collection. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm not sure that I would like all the films that are in that collection. Um, but those are some that I've been after. And then there's a renowned Western five films. Um, it's got Randolph Scott in it, and there's some old mm -hmm. Western, black and white Westerns. I love the Randolph Scott Western, so I'm looking forward to that one also. Yeah, I I, I kind of want to get that one and watch it with my grandmother because she loves Westerns. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't used to like, you know, growing up, I didn't like the old black and white films. I didn't like the gangster films. Yeah. I didn't like the Charlie Chaplin films. I didn't like the Westerns. <laughs> but as I've gotten older, um, I, really, I really enjoy them and appreciate them, especially Same. all the things that they've accomplished back then without all the technology that we have today, it's just amazing how they did all of that. Yeah. And, you know, going back to Wes Anderson, I think that's another reason I appreciate him. I know that he uses special effects here and there, but for the most part, everything's in camera, yeah. but it is such a simpler time. Um, but you're right. The, I mean, that's why I think people love citizen Kane so much mm -hmm. because of just how many advancements came out of that movie. But, right. but um, yeah. It's all, yeah. it's all good. Uh, you know, they'll get my money somehow here. Right. Soon. <laughs> well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on my channel to talk about the Criterion Collection. Is there anything that you have coming up that you would like to promote or anything? Well, um, I'm going to be doing a new channel called Sir Crazy Pants. Sir uh, Crazy Pants? Yeah. So it's a, it's a kids music, like punk rock music for kids. And uh, we're going to be doing movie reviews over there. Uh, Going to be doing uh rewatch my childhood and stuff like that. So to see if movies still stand up, um, trying to introduce kids to better music and better movies so that they know that they're out there because I don't know that anybody else is really <laughs> pushing them towards children. So, um, yeah, so going to do that. And then, um, you never know, we might get on and review a movie or something here on cinema machine. Um, it's not dead. It's just, uh, on hiatus. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Gotta get, ryan back from milk and cows yeah <laughs> no thanks for having me though man it's yeah, good yeah to see i really you. appreciate it and hopefully we'll get to have you on the channel again here soon thank you very much okay we'll see you later have a good one thanks so that was a really great conversation that I had with Al. Some really good recommendations. Um, I, I jotted some of those down. I really want to check out some of these. It's always nice to get a good recommendation for some of these titles. 
um, so that you're not so overwhelmed with what to um, purchase. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this um, conversation and if you'd like to see me do more of these because I really do enjoy reading your comments. If you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. If you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and on Twitter. And if you'd like to find out what I've been watching, you can find me over on Letterboxd. I do have links below. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.